welcome to the 51st session of Bhutan Dialogues. It's such a pleasure and honor to be hosting Bhutan Dialogue here in our campus for the second time. I'm Seong Tandri, President of the Royal Thimphu College. Our theme for today is Harnessing Creativity and Art in Life. Although the title <coughs> promotes art as a part of life and as come opposed to life itself, in many ways life is art and art is life. No matter how fragile the times, it is a testimony of the human condition, the human experience and emotions, be it suffering or solitude, and of course, the human perception of the world. Artists are therefore often referred to as magicians, as they are creators of a holistic portal for a deeper comprehension of the self, humans, the world, and beyond. Like in many parts of the world, art holds a sacred place in the heart of Bhutan as it offers a gateway to emphasize and amplify the human connection with the historical, spiritual, and the religious realms. As we delve a little bit into the essence of creation, allow me the pleasure of introducing one of the most talented creators of contemporary and traditional Buddhist art, Mr. Kamaongdi, fondly known as Aja Karma. Aja and I studied together <laughs> at Yang Chenpo. Then it was called Thimphu Public School and we belong to Yak House. <laughs> All the three houses are completely wild, bear, leopard and tiger. So I believe we had decent people in Yak House. We were about 50 in that house, so we lived together, ate together, played together, so it was like a big family. So I knew Kama for a very long time. And today, uh, of course, Kama as a sound profession, professional person, and also he upholds integrity to the core and a great role model for all of us. And uh, this afternoon I was wondering what attire would Kama turn up for this occasion. <laughs> so very happy to see that white sleeve and leather shoes for the first time. I've <laughs> never seen him in that dress before. <laughs> So Kama is the founder of Vast Bhutan, which has and continues to touch the lives of many young Bhutanese. Aja Kama is a recipient of the award of the National Order of Merit, gold medal from His Majesty the King of Bhutan, mm -hmm. for his outstanding contribution in arts and voluntary service for children and the young people of Bhutan. Uh, Kama is also a... a very fond environmentalist. When the Tomde wanted to cut down trees at the Thimphu uh, clock center, Kama was there to hug the trees and the trees are still standing there. Our host uh, today is Dr. Kama Pinsu. He needs no introduction. He is the founder of the Warden Foundation and currently sits on Warden's Board of Trustees. He is a spiritual thought leader, Buddhist teacher, and a writer in digital residence for the Buddha Nature Project at the Sandra Foundation. Before I invite to start the conversation, just like to state some very basic house rules. I would like to request everyone to keep your phones on silent. There will be a Q&A session afterwards and I would like to request that questions to the panel be kept precise and to the point in the interest of allowing time for more questions within the limited time 
and for in-depth responses, rendering the Q&A session a meaningful exchange. Our online viewers may drop their questions in the chat box. The Bhutan Dialogues team will compile the questions and read them out during the Q&A session. Thank you and Prashitele. The floor is now yours. Kuzo Zampo and welcome to the 51st session of Bhutan Dialogues. I have uh, pledged to finish 50 sessions of Bhutan Dialogues as a service to Bhutanese youth. And now we are beginning our second cycle of 50. Uh, this is the first session and uh, this, the venue couldn't have been better uh, than having it here in this wonderful, beautiful, pleasant uh, campus of Timpur Royal College. And it couldn't be more auspicious to have a speaker like Ajay Karma. Uh, we share the same first name. And I discovered that we also share the same house at Yangchenpu, although I was much <laughs> later than the two gentlemen here. Uh, so, welcome. Thank you for uh, giving us the honor to talk about uh, creativity and art in life. Now, uh, when I think about art, as I was driving down to RTC, I was uh, pondering a bit on today's topic. Art, uh, to me, is a creative expression of our inner impulse, our emotions, and our state of mind as a whole. Um, it's really like almost the blood that flows through our body to keep it warm and alive. Perhaps also a bit like the breeze and the sunshine and the lush greenness that you see here on RTC's campus, something that makes life vibrant and beautiful. Um, whether it be poetry or painting, gardening or cooking or philosophical musings like the one that I often do, art I think is uh, a deeper, higher, more meaningful expression of our inner state. And uh, I consider it as the highest pursuit of hope, freedom, and truth, a way to, a very sort of creative way to capture these fleeting moments of truth or glimpses of our sort of inner being. So I consider art so important in my life, Haja. And uh, I think especially for humanity at this stage of our history, art is uh, fundamental for our well-being. So my first question to you, as a doyen um, of Putinese art, the founder of Bhutan's only center for creative contemporary art, what does art mean to you? How did you get into art? What initially inspired you to dedicate your whole life to the work of art? Yeah, that's, that's, thank you, La. Good evening, everyone. Uh, before I struggle to answer doctor's uh, mm. many questions mm. this evening. I, I would like to thank doctor and I would like to thank RTC and I would like to thank all of you for being here actually. And I would uh, pray and I would love that we start a session of another 50 today. Another 50 of your <laughs> uh, beautiful and wonderful and important talk. Could we, as an uh, artist community, could we pray that that other 50 will be on art <laughs> for, for Bhutan and for the youth of Bhutan and for particularly for the, the growth of art in the country? Uh, I would on behalf of the artistic community and on my own behalf, I would uh, like to express my deep uh, appreciation for having such platform for, for Bhutan and particularly for the growth of art in the country. I think uh, we all know that art is part of us, art is the blood in our being, but we don't mm. talk much about it. We don't actually value much about it. Mm -hmm. So probably I don't want to really s start a conversation on the negative note, but this is the truth. Mm. We need to really come on a platform, like get our president to get me on the hot seat, 
now and then <laughs> with my go <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that way it is very important the other again before then, before the question i have one more thing to say la, that uh, um, i would uh, like to again thank bhutan dialogue especially bhutan dialogue and doctor for having uh, brought in the the presenting this harnessing creativity and art for life or art in life or anything like but uh, thank you very much mm. for that mm. and um, so your personal journey aja um, I, i think we can come back later to discuss about the challenges that artists face nice, the lack nice. of space to discuss art or need for reviews yeah. and so forth but i think a lot of young people are looking for inspiration you know, sometimes they are at a crossroad not knowing what to pursue in life nice. what made you pursue art maybe there is a inspirational story behind that nice. which can help young people either pursue art or drop art <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, um now uh, doctor's first question is mm. uh, what mm. what made me mm. to be an artist mm. and then what is my influences yes. and then yes. in my my journey in art actually um as an in, uh, individual i consider art as my journey i consider art as my my soul uh, awareness mm. my my understanding my communication tool and then if you want if i'm allowed mm. i want to shout that art is my life mm. art is my lifeline mm. and i breathe art mm. i eat art mm. i walk art <laughs> I I like to shout like that. Mm. But then when I, did you discover that <laughs> art is your life? Um that that could be <laughs> later on la but uh, yeah. the pers- the pursue as an artist where I decided to become an artist uh, it goes back when I was growing up. Mm. I mean I grew up in a village. My my days in in temple public school wasn't that exciting because i'm not really in the uh, foreground i'm most of the time i'm in my own kind of uh, world world and uh, not so very uh, active in the <laughs> in the curriculum and little bit of a uh, 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 our president not so about that very much <laughs> <laughs> so uh the the thing that i came across when i when i was growing up in the village my uh, parents were were the great uh, inspiration they were they were very wise the way they brought me up wholesome in a wholesome manner was actually my longing to become an artist i was given a knife when i was growing up when i was small because it's a tool of necessity i had uh, the courage to to play with it i had the courage to carry on me day night day and night and and i was given the freedom to to understand that tool and make it uh, work which means i grew up using my hand regularly uh, probably that that really opened up my uh, because using a knife you need a guidance the parents provide you that guidance and then using using a razor sharp knife you have to be able to think you have to be able to be in control which probably made me uh, understand how the three three important coordination works out like for example the eye needs to observe and i needs to see and observe the brain needs to <laughs> record and then the brain needs to guide the limbs and the part of your body to function 
So probably that that early on combination of these three things really made me kind of uh, inspired or made me longing mm. to 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 get going and practicing mm. using my hand mm. regularly. Mm. So that's how how it is. Mm. Then I would like to add on that. It was my fortunate. Uh, I was very privileged that my school happened to have a, a principal where he he thinks that wholesome education is very important, not academically, because he were he saw few of us who are not very sound academically, and then he decided to bring an art teacher to the school, mm. which was my <coughs> blessing, la. Mm. So. This art teacher was very dear to me. He literally put me under his wings. He made me sleep in the house. He made me, uh, when I'm hungry, he will go and take feed me, and then he will give me whatever guidance I needed, not only in art but in dealing. And he kind of tamed me. He requested uh, his uh, neighbor teacher to guide me to. At least score some mark in the mathematics. I used to score zero <laughs> out of hundred. <laughs> so, so likewise, he was really like uh, like a godsend uh, individual yes. in in helping me out. And then, of course, my parents were, although they are farmers, they are uneducated. My father was, I could say, he was an artist of, or in his own right, la, because. He was uh, doing a lot of artistic mm. things. He he actually sculpted toys for us, mm. like horses. Then mm. he even made one time he made made a dancing. Uh, he said dancing Indian guy mm -hmm. because he went mm. to India. He saw probably he must have seen a puppet or something like that. Mm. He made a toy for us where strings are attached and then this. Mm. This figure could dance mm. a little bit, so that sort of influences I had, and I consider myself very fortunate like mm. that way. Wonderful, such touching stories. You know, I think you brought up uh, two very important points in your uh, story, which I think is so relevant for students in an educational institution. Um, the first is you know, when we think about creativity or education generally, most people associate it with the cognitive intelligence. You know, people have to be sort of brain-wise only. Yes. And there's so much focus on the academic intelligence, whereas you were talking about using a knife to really groom your artistic skills is <laughs> a very physiological uh, intelligence, isn't it? And you sort of uh, said that you had zero mathematical intelligence. <laughs> so we have people with different kinds of intelligences and uh, it's so important that perhaps education should also gear towards bringing out the intelligence that young people have in themselves and you because of your mentorship through this art teacher you had must have been inspired to also found a past and be the same kind of mentor for many other young people so tell us a little bit about how vast started i always tell this uh Member, young members in Basla, mm -hmm. because uh, Bas is not an art center. Bas is uh, not a not a shelter. Bas Bas is a is a palace. Bas <laughs> is, is, is a is a sacred place mm -hmm. where we all have opportunity to grow out of it. La. But technically, Bas really started like Doctor Put mm -hmm. Putin. Like technically, Bas really started. On the on the grounds of uh, on gratitude, on kindness of people, on compassion of people who have bestowed on single uh, individuals like us, mm. so that was that was the main driving force of setting up uh, in a center, not a center, but. A, a place like it's that. It's a studio. Right? Yeah, a studio. So BAST, uh, yes. for our international friends here who may not okay. know what BAST stands for. It's Voluntary Arts uh, Studio. BAST is because we we were having some, uh, we, we were discussing like, why, why BAST? 
I was saying, why was Because Bhutan is so small, we have to have a vast name. <laughs> but actually, it means Voluntary Artist Studio of Thimpu. So that 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 is uh, a long name of us, and then it uh, it happened to be like a place where people who people like me who are uh, lost, who have uh, who have uh, so much uh, so much um, desire and a dream to become uh, become uh, become become a creative person or something like that. And to be honest, I mean, like, we are the lucky mm -hmm. ones like, where we have so much opportunities, where we're given uh, the, the wholesome education in a practical way. But there were, down the line in the 80s and in 90s, there were the, uh, I think, not only in Bhutan, but uh, all regionally, our art curriculums were dropped out, the art budget gets slashed down and uh, then the same happened in Bhutan also. Later on when uh, my friend was the principal there, uh, then there is no art teacher by then. La. Mm -hmm. So that that way, and then then we, few of us, we try to go to schools mm -hmm. thinking that we could do something, we could help this, uh, uh, assist this teachers who are interested in art and it was quite a tough tough thing because uh, principals were all engaged in a, in a, they were very busy with their own curriculums and sometimes uh, we are not even as a volunteer we are not even allowed to come to the schools because uh, we take about two to three hours of their time so it is not not very encouraging mm -hmm. so but some teachers were some principals were very uh, helpful. They allow us to give at least two hours in a, in a week mm -hmm. to spend some time. So we found it very difficult to penetrate in, uh, in, the, in that, that uh, uh, mm -hmm. boundary. So, so we decided why not we do it Saturdays and Sundays where we don't have to deal with teachers. Mm. That's how we started. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, as we're talking about harnessing creativity and art, um, Vast has certainly turned out to be so successful, uh, not only in promoting artistic talent, but also keeping a lot of young people off the streets from getting into um, sort of negative, unfortunate uh, uh, practices. So, what do you do at Vast actually, to promote that creativity, to, to attract the young people? You make it sound like it's a very um, uh, sort of comfortable, enjoyable place, with even considering it as a palace. <laughs> so can you tell us how do you promote creativity in young people, especially at vast? And what, again, can the Bhutanese society as a whole, and particularly the education system, the state, can do to promote creativity? We, we hear a lot about you know, how there's focus on STEM education, now there's uh, focus on technology and so on, but we rarely hear about what the state is doing to promote art and creativity. What would be your thoughts on enhancing creativity? Yes, yes. Uh, Vas, actually, we didn't really take off children from the street. Like we went to the street mm. ourselves. <laughs> we, we, we were actually with them in the street. Like. So yeah. that that the approach is completely different. Mm. But when we were in a position where we could hire hire a studio, and it's, we call it palace and we call it secret, but it used to be very dingy. <laughs> <laughs> we had you know, our studio, finally we, after two, three years, finally we found our space uh, on in the attic and we shared that attic with pigeons for for eight years, la. and uh, actually, that in the attic we had few tanks for the other uh, residents also, and we never knew that there were few dead pigeons in the tank. We even <laughs> drank those. So, so uh, you know, there, there are so many interesting stories, and that's how 
that's how we grew up and that's how the people young people who who were associated with us were brought brought up and then we shared like a family they 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 come back from the school hungry we just uh, keep have a big pot where we can cook anything and then eat together and then some of them learn how to drink also because uh, uh, in the evening to pay the rent for that that studio i used to i used to bring in some friends and sell alcohol to them <laughs> sometimes <laughs> So, so there, there are a lot of uh, things going in like that. But, but in the end, they had, they were happy. We could, uh, we could provide uh, not a very professional counseling or professional guidance, but we could provide them a free, uh, free space with uh, free atmosphere free advice where they don't have to be uh, frightened or where they don't have to hide their their uh, secrets you know we share things mm. and then we share once we start sharing food i think that happens mula mm. like we mm. shared food for 10 years mm. and uh, we have so many stories to tell mm. so that that way so it was like an indirect uh, uh, exploring the the possibilities of art. Mm. So when we really talk about art and creativity, mm. I think when you really look, I mean, like blandly, we can say mm. that art is everything. Like mm. any mm. everything, art is everything. You know, like we apply art to any good things. Like for example, you talk nicely, you talk mm. with humanity, you be humble, and you have. You talk gracefully, then you say, oh, art of talking, mm. art of listening. You listen carefully, you absorb what people are saying, then you apply art of listening. Mm. And Zumba say, likewise, we apply art to art of cooking, art of eating also. Mm. And sometimes, as a young, young person, many of our young friends enjoy sleeping well. <laughs> so we call the art of sleeping. You sleep twelve hours or fifteen hours a day. <laughs> um, uh, yes, I think uh, there is a very beautiful, um, mindful, if you use the Buddhist term, yes. mindful way of doing things more effectively, compassionately, uh, which can be considered as an art. But um, if we now sort of narrow down a little bit to talk about what we normally call art, uh, visual arts or performing arts or fine arts that you um, are an expert in. When we look around the Bhutanese sort of uh, um, world of arts, you find actually quite a lot of imitation which is often mistaken for innovation and creativity. So how do we actually help people understand that creativity is not just about copying somebody else's work, especially you know, in music, for instance, we've heard so many um, adaptations of foreign musical lyrics or tunes, and this applies to also other kinds of art. <coughs> How can we enhance the true sort of original thinking and creativity here? Yes, uh, uh, now, as I'm not... Uh, I mean, like professionally sound in actually advising or issues on 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 this. Sometimes it just doctors' questions actually fly mm. over my head. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even uh, in your no, in at vast, uh, there must have been some cases where people come and of course it's okay to also imitate and copy. That's a good beginning, yeah. but uh, if somebody mistakes such imitation and copying of somebody else's style, can we go beyond that to create original pieces? Uh, how can one do that? Yes. Do you uh, have, find these problems at vast? Anyway? Yes. Um, when it comes to creativity, mm. like when we when it really comes to harnessing creativity, tachigi, koshengi, any continuation, I think there are very 
few things that we have to we have to really consider. Mm. There is uh, to think. You have to think, 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 and then uh, and then creativity. I think is not only a responsibility for for the for the visual artists or mm. for the performers or mm. for the sculptors or creativity. I think. It should be part of mm. life for mm. all of us. Mm. If we are not willing to think, there won't be a creativity. Mm. If you are not really willing to act according to what you think, mm. there won't be a creativity. Mm. Then if you are not really willing to contemplate on your mm. understanding, on your, your thinking, then uh, then there is no, no mm. process of uh, creativity. And then when it comes to imitation and copying, I think uh, there are, it's, it's, it's very difficult to ask me. Everybody copies everyone, <laughs> actually. Uh, we are, uh, we are, um, we are, I mean, like, we are, Human beings, no? we mm. see things and we start uh, adapting to to what what to good and bad things are going around, and then you imitate mm. people. Mm. You sometimes we imitate even birds, and mm. nowadays Nature. we imitate even machines mm. and and phone also. Yeah. So we are so so much into imitation mm. and copying. La. But as far as you are honest, as far as mm. you are genuine, mm. as far as you are what you are doing. If, as far as mm. you believe in what you are doing, mm. genuinely, I think uh, there are uh, there are so many uh, excuses. No, that we mm. can actually get by. Mm. But when you copy something, you know that you are copying. But you 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 feel that eh, who will know? I have copied from this. Who mm. will know? On that pretext, if if you do, mm. not only artists, mm. any one of us, yes. mm. if you don't really respect, mm. then uh, then there's no value. There is no mm. no no reason to talk about it. It's, then the fake, mm. the whole. When you consider art as your life, then you are you are full of uh, imitating, and when you are full of uh, yourself, being that you are better than that imitation or we are better than the original, then we are faking that. that when we fake, we are faking our own life then. Mm -hmm. we, that our whole life is, is, is fake then. What's the point of actually living actually? Mm -hmm. uh, so the truth the, 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 the anime, well, like, mm -hmm. we have to be honest, yes. we have to be true. There's no point that, oh, I, I faked, I, I just copied mm. this uh, this mm. person, uh, his work, I just copied the way he walked, the way he talked, it makes me nice. Mm. You have to, uh, you have to face it and you have mm. to, I think you have to uh, yes. accept the challenge, yes. no? <laughs> or people, people, uh, and you could do pointing fingers at you. Yes. <laughs> now, even in Zongka, or in general, Himalayan, um, uh, idioms you have Jawa Tamchi Lemoin, Lemoin and Kankin, know that all our endeavors are imitations of what other people have done. And art is, I think, an imitation of nature, of our past. But then, um, what I also want to bring up is uh, when you are an artist, perhaps you have to have a higher degree of originality in that you may be imitating somebody's work, but you add a value, you make it better or more nuanced, more refined through your contribution. Right. Um, whereas if you are just carrying on the legacy as it is, um, then you become a craftsman perhaps. So yeah. how do we distinguish basically between these two worlds of artist and craftsman or yeah. craftsperson? Yeah. Uh, and I think particularly when we look at our traditional art culture, oh, yeah. there is so much uh, of that repetition Yes. very faithful repetition of something like when you draw the buddha when you paint the buddha you have to stick to the econometrics you have to stick to the color uh, combinations that were dictated or written down by some holy persons in the past so would that be more craftsmanship or artist from your point of view yes. um how do you 
see the distinction between these two. Yes. For the last uh, 50, maybe 50 to 60 years, I've been really struggling. I've been really trying to be the artist I want to be. Mm. And uh, I have uh, I have gone through a lot of, um, um, you know, like, uh, traditional method of learning. I have gone through the craftsmanship mm. the approach to art. I have tried to kind of narrow it down to my self-expression and things mm. like that. Um, but with all the, you know, the experiences, with all the uh, ups and downs, I think uh, I've realized that, that's a good question, yes. I've realized that we are as a society, we are failing so much into promoting mm. art as mm. as a as a as a greater tool mm. for for a prosperity of the nation mm. or a greater tool to build a nation. Because we we tend to leave art just eh that's that's not our field. Eh? That's uh, artist Ajgama ki group ki. <laughs> so it's left to us, and we are left left with very no not so much choice, not so much uh, room to express ourselves. We are not left with not so much uh, uh, not so much. Uh, there's no no money at all actually to to really explore anything. So there is so, but the responsibility. He said, oh, that, that is the art line there. Yeah? You go and deal with Ajakama and his group. That, 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 that big responsibility is just thrown on your lap or your head. Mm. So sometimes you get crushed and sometimes you are left with not being able to actually do anything. So the, the narrowing down the artistic, the aesthetic, and the craftsmanship, uh, how how we promote, that that is not only our issue, it's a national issue. Mm -hmm. And it's, we need to have centers, we need to have uh, platforms where this will be criticized, discussed, and come out with proper way of learning. And there should be a proper way of a guideline saying that this is craft, this is art, how we move from this object, from a craft's uh, mm. image to an artistic image. We need to really do a, a serious study yes. and then we need a uh, lot of uh, support from mm. people like you with good good governance over, over uh, the, the it's uh, the, the growth of spirituality in art and how the spir how spirituality can actually promote mm. art and how <coughs> art can promote spiritual spirituality mm. and how we value crafts mm. and the craftsman mm. to uh, at a different degree at a different level mm. so that that will only happen if there is a dialogue mm. if there is an institute where you study mm. and then then only we not even as a craftsman, but as an artist also, mm. we will learn to value our work. Nice. So um, there is not enough national, state level avenues for you to explore such discussions. And I think we have discussed about how there is a need for an arts academy, if possible, and perhaps an art endowment and so forth. But um, success in art, you know, especially for young people who are aspiring to be recognized artists, I personally think art and spiritual journeys are very personal, personal vocations. That's what drives you mostly. And you, know, you not only need to have that creativity, that passion, uh, but in addition to that creativity, you probably need to sort of burn the midnight <laughs> lamp oil a lot, do a lot of hard work, you know? commit yourself with diligence and um, have patience to succeed. I know quite a lot of my artist friends in the West. They make enough money to survive only towards the end of their life <laughs> when they become highly accomplished. And perhaps your 
own story is a bit like that. You had become much more well known only in the recent past, but you have spent, you said, about 50, 60 years already um, engaged in art. So, can you tell how much of hard work and diligence is also important, you know, how that matters to be a successful artist? Because I think among young people, sometimes you have this conception, misconception rather, also that. If you don't want to get into mainstream jobs like being an engineer or a doctor or an administrator, it's easy to become an artist. But it's not easy to become an artist if you want to be a recognized uh, artist who will sort of make a mark. No? So, as a, um, what would be your advice <laughs> regarding uh, creativity versus hard work, diligence? Uh, That's that. Um, yeah, being being an artist is. Uh, Difficult, very difficult, and and you have to. Everyone got a dream. Everyone get inspired to become an artist. You draw, draw some, because you have managed to train your skill, your hand skill in a good good manner, and you could really draw. But that is not enough to become an artist. I think, because. Uh, like me as as an individual, I'm still touchy love I'm mm -hmm. still really struggling to be the artist I want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, which it really boils down to uh, same that the president gave Sundu Zumba, like that your <coughs> like your your art as life, no? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about your life there are so many things, but first priority in your life is is how good you want to be as a human being, mm -hmm. how best you can be in the service of uh, for the well-being of the human being, how 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 compassionate you can be, how how. Mm -hmm honest you can be, how mm. genuine you can be, and how much you can dedicate, it, dedicate yourself to what you are doing. Mm. So it's basically it it's comes down to a point where art, making an art mm. is like counting your own money beats. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you need to have a dedicated determination, you need to have a, uh, you should be driven with passion, you should be driven with a goal that that cannot be brought in a supermarket. Mm. So, as an artist, as a painter, mm. you have to, you have to paint, la. you have to paint, you can imitate, you can copy, but you paint mm. from your soul and let the painting talk about mm. what you have painted. You paint for yourself. You paint for yourself to get engaged. So now, for example, you count Om Mani Padme Hum all the time, thousand times, ten thousand times. Why? You want to occupy yourself. You want to go to Nirvana. You want to be enlightened. It's the same thing like painting. Is if we can dedicate ourselves, if we can passionately get into the painting. You don't have to market, you don't have to uh, say anything. If people are, the painting will talk about it and some, some crazy people will come and you pay a million dollars and, and then you, you blow that over a night because you are not really fond of, uh, you are not really good at handling cash. So, <laughs> so that, that is the approach, no? But we never paint. We never paint. I always tell my young guys, Oh, this painting is more more than what you are scratching on the canvas. It mm. is, it involves so much. It is, uh, it, uh, it it's it's very serious business. Mm. But uh, if you paint, thinking that I will sell this, then I will get this much money. I will invest in a car or I'll give it to my boyfriend or girlfriend, buy a nice mm -hmm. phone. Uh, then what you are doing in front of you is, is not part of you. Mm. It's part of that money. Mm. 
so it's useless. I, t I tell them like that. And honestly, if people buy, it's good. If people don't buy, also you will have a chance where you can sell. And if I have money, I will buy. So, the, you know, but work with passion, work with full heart. And, but still, if young people have a dream and have a comparison with their friends who is working in a bank or working in a foreign uh, foreign office and getting lots of money and then, the, you know, their way of dressing, you are in, you are envious about the way they are eating, the way they are dressing, then you have to try another profession. You are, you are not an artist. Mm -hmm. You, you can paint, yes, mm -hmm. but you can actually let it go for some time and then do that needful things to, to mm -hmm. challenge, mm -hmm. uh, challenge or to do that needful thing, mm -hmm. what your parents are doing mm -hmm. it. And then you, and then after 50 years, you can come back and paint mm -hmm. or after um, you, you have made enough money, you can come back and paint in a year also, because sometimes you, you make better money mm. outside your profession, actually, <laughs> outside, outside your dreams, mm. you know? Mm. So, yes. I, I always tell that, like, it's a... Mm. No, that's a, a very important. Moment. I think uh, um, you are talking about painting, but I suppose in any artistic creation, so I do quite a bit of writing, you need to concentrate, you need to immerse yourself into it. In fact, you need to become one with the project you are engaged in. And I think that kind of um, wholehearted immersion <laughs> is what really brings out the, the most beautiful, most powerful uh, um, outcomes, no? yeah. whether it be writing or um, piece of art. I think we'll stop here uh, to take questions from the audience, if there are any questions from the audience here. Uh, please raise your hand. My question is, um, for you personally as a professional artist, what is your relationship between <coughs> religion and art? That is a very important question. Thank you. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not a very religious uh, individual. I have, uh, like, uh, but I'm very spiritual. I, I could say that I'm very spiritual, and my spirituality is is uh, is is my artwork. I think I, I connect my artwork with a lot of uh, my understanding, my my spirituality, my struggles, and things like that. Uh, so I I tend to pray through my art. If 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 that is possible if that is if that is okay in a in a religious arena if that is okay i i diligently prepare i diligently count my beats through my painting and then in many of my paintings uh, i write a lot of omane pimeho because i try to uh, sometime you know in bhutan you can't really say, oh, no, I'm not religious. You can't just just keep aside because every everywhere you go, you are connected to religion. Everywhere you go, you are always in, in front of a lama. Everywhere you go, even into your village, there is always a, a, a few monks performing prayers and things like that. So you can't really avoid. But then I started counting Om Mane Pime Hum and then I started chanting a little bit. It didn't make any impact on on me. In fact, it made me disturbed because I could not focus. I could not focus. And then uh, <coughs> basic, basically in Buddhist, Buddhist uh, I think Buddhist preaching, if you are not focused, then it's, it's a sin. If you are not really, if you are not really uh, committed, mm. uh, practicing is a sin. So I said, okay, I'm, I cannot commit myself. I can't go myself through this. A lot of my friends are all, already into counting their beats, but I couldn't do it. 
But I started painting on my pemeho on my paintings, which I thought it was better because <laughs> I, if I, if I explore or if I let my imagination run wild, if I just start thinking about, oh, I forgot to do that, I want to go there this uh, while painting, then later on I found my money is missing. Sometimes Kiku is missing, sometimes Naro is missing, sometimes Ma is missing, because I am not there while painting. So same thing while I am counting, I do that. Sometimes I fall to sleep, no? That, that, that. So while writing, I thought, oh, that's, uh, I could focus, I could stay there. I don't know the meaning of Om Mani Pi Mi but it, it really helps me to stay there. So, so likewise, I have so much, uh, I try, I try myself to get in whatever I'm painting, some part of spirituality into it. I paint a forest. But then there are some, some understanding of a forest. I have to be in the forest. So basically, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying that as a Buddhist you have to do that. But basically, if that is what we want to believe. So the first question is, would you agree that there is a subliminal stigma towards art as a career in Bhutan? If so, how can external agencies like the government and CSOs help overcome that and accommodate the creation of more career opportunities in art? Another very important question that will help us to understand. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, as a, my personal view is uh, as long as we are not viewing art as, as a career, as art as a, as a a, a higher dimension, art as a pursue, art as a as a goal. Uh, any one of us can can help any anyone. It's, it will be very easy, mostly. But once you start thinking it as a career, then what we really need is uh, is basically not only <laughs> art or painting. Basically, what we need in Bhutan right now is our focus, our dedication, our our force, our input to do what we are capable of doing it. Imala. So, uh, if if we all put that force together, I think seven hundred people can really will make an impact. And as an artist as an artist who are aware of aware of uh, the artist's uh, importance mm. artist uh, artist uh, value the art value in in our society i think 700 of us think together mm. i think art world will have have a, have a place in an international <laughs> market <laughs> mm. or we will be we will we will have the opportunity to actually promote Bhutan in another dimension, not only like beautiful mountains and beautiful of course the zongs are part of the art uh, uh, promotion, the zongs, the cultures, the dress the the things that we are wearing the the you know the the, the, the dance that we are performing the 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 chants we are doing it the 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 all the all the props that we are using is all also promoting Bhutan in a very artistic way. Mm. Yeah. If I may add to this, um, yeah. I think uh, uh, when people talk about a, a subliminal or some uh, sort of uh, unfelt stigma associated with art in Bhutan, we are often talking about the modern contemporary art. Now, if you look at the traditional Bhutan, the artists are highly revered individuals, especially if they are ma master artists uh, doing the statues in the temple or wall paintings in the Zong. They are immensely respected and highly revered. So there's, in fact, uh, a very high stature that they are given, far away from being stigmatized. Um, but the contemporary art world here in Bhutan is still very, very young. It's a fleshling. And as Aja has pointed out, there isn't enough 
forums and avenues to discuss contemporary art and creativity. There isn't enough state support. Uh, so it's really a voluntary enterprise at the moment, and that makes them look as lesser than the state institutions or the main sort of public offices we have here. And that also doesn't help young people become career artists. So uh, what we probably would need to go forward to really get rid of that stigma, <coughs> if there is any, and bring the contemporary artists on the same level as traditional artists, particularly the master artists, would be perhaps have art in the education system to begin with. At the moment, as far as I know, I haven't gone through any proper artistic education in school. Now, you were lucky you had a mentor. Um, I had some interest in art, but there was no curriculum, there was no it's pre sort of proper session as part of the school education. And uh, then, of course, even beyond that, we have to have perhaps a, a much larger public discussion and public awareness about how to value art, how to critique art. And only when we have such a healthy art sort of consciousness, we probably can also help the people who get a little stigmatized right now. Imbilani, um, on this uh, line, I think uh, there are still big, big uh, chances now, you know, like uh, with, uh, with the whole uh, transformation, uh, the people are, I mean, like, uh, getting aware of the of the power of the soft power, the, you call it soft power, no? the soft power actually deals with creativity and harnessing creativity mm. is very much part of the soft power and hopefully I think in Bhutan we will soon have mm. uh, on the negative note we actually don't even have a professional gallery, gallery actually mm. as such we don't have a, an art critic. We don't have anyone who could come and say, "Oh, your art looks like that." Yeah, we let me write about it. Looks good, do uh, good, bad. Mm -hmm. Nobody comes and say anything. Nobody comes and write anything. Uh, if you request the the media people, also there not much. Uh, they'll say, "Oh, we don't have an art critic. We don't have anyone trained as an art critic." So uh, it's very difficult, uh, and then, and if people don't want to talk about it, people don't want to bring out. Then there, there is no growth, as such. And then, as long as we don't have a, a gallery, then art is always hidden. Uh, some of the artists are already like having problem. Uh, <laughs> storing their artwork in fact. <laughs> so we need to have uh, galleries, we need to have, uh, I mean like with people who have put their effort into become, trying to become an artist, we have to really sort out to turning a hotel lobby into an uh, art gallery, which is very problematic actually. We can't hang the picture the way we want. And sometimes the hanging a picture itself is an art. You mm. can't do that because the, mm. the the hotel manager is looking at us and waiting where we are going to bang the nail, <laughs> how they are go we are going to put some color on their walls. And if I do the same exhibition here in RTC, I think some of you guys mm. will be watching what we are <laughs> yes. going to do. Yes. So the, we are in that kind of situation, and hopefully it's, it's not an... Mm. Uh, dream it will happen uh, sooner mm. and then we, nice. we, we we want to pray for that also. Mm. Nice. Nice. I want to chip in another point um, in reference to the last question but also the previous question. Uh, one other thing we need to seriously address is this widening gap between religion and spirituality. Uh, religion is pretty much like craftsmanship, very sort of regulated, dictated, um, normalized and then you have spirituality which is a bit like art where you have to be very open and explorative. Um, the current understanding of sacred art among the Bhutanese populace is something associated with 
only religion. So religious art is considered sacred art, and therefore they get all the respect, they get all the funding and support. Anything that is outside of that religious domain is seen as uh, alien, new, and sometimes even sort of dismissed as total sort of uh, pure work of imagination or fiction, totally valueless. So I think the Bhutanese need to reorient their way of uh, thinking about religion and spirituality. That, as you said, when you focus single-pointedly on creating Om Mani Penme Hum on your canvas, that is as powerful a religious or a spiritual practice as somebody spending three years chanting Om Mani Penme Hum, because you are training that mind to the same level. So I think as educated Bhutanese audience, at least the young people, I hope will start to think about their religious perspectives, widen it a bit, and start to appreciate new ways of spiritual expressions. Um, you talked a little bit, touched upon creativity and inspiration, um, but on the other side, uh, what is your relationship with self-doubt as an artist and how do you overcome a uh, lack of inspiration and creativity periods of life? Mm. So that was the last question I was going to ask you. <laughs> um, have there been any case of self-doubt uh, in terms of your work, uh, in terms of your creati creativity? In fact, I want to put the question slightly differently and ask you, when you look back at your career as an artist, right. have you failed and in what ways? Or what would we have done differently? <laughs> so if you can address that, both the questions uh, together, self-doubt and failure. That's um, I think I fairly had a very interesting journey in in my life, uh, surrounded by by inspiration, surrounded by creativity, and uh, I could tell a short story, like uh, not by our president, but some of my senior friends. They said, this, ah, this Bokama is a useless guy, yeah. <laughs> not studying properly, not doing anything, not really keen in sport, you know, always wandering around in, in the teacher's garden and uh, stealing chilies and <laughs> fruits. <laughs> and uh, they said, ah, this guy will not do anything in his life. You know, they have even interpreted, they even said, I even heard myself also. <laughs> but according to what they have thought, I think I have uh, fairly done well in my life. I am here confidently talking about <laughs> mm. art and creativity and I'm, uh, you know, like, um, uh, like, I'm not uh, saying that, you know, I've, uh, I've done better than them. I mean, like, I, I've, I've uh, come uh, a long way struggling it you know i'm 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 confident enough to stand and speak and you know whether i speak broken english or broken zonka mm. i i'm i'm willing to face it and i'm willing to uh, struggle i'm willing to f face all the challenges that that helped me the art helped me to do do that otherwise uh, if these this uh, bangali guy who came from South Africa to teach in Bhutan, if he was not around, I would be right now plowing or probably like carrying my granddaughter, my granddaughter or grandson mm -hmm. and uh, going around the church and counting all my people <laughs> in, a, in a wrong direction. <laughs> so that way I, I feel that, you know, I have, at some stage I have uh, thanked thanks to art and thanks to all the good people around me have uh, really helped me where, right now. Where I am, people, my young friends, they always consider me as their, their guru, they consider me as their uncle, Aja means uncle, and they always look up to me. So I have done fairly okay. Mm. But on other note, I feel very badly. That is, I could not really fulfill my father's wishes. When I went, uh, when I failed, when I got kicked out of the school, 
then I have to really do a I have to do a major decision. I have to really take a major decision in my life. So I said, okay, now what to do? I want to become an artist. Then I went and talked to my father, saying that, Papa, I want to paint. I want to become a harip. And he said, very good. <laughs> very good because, uh, you know, you don't have to struggle like me in the field, in the sun and rain. You don't have to plow field. You will be quietly sitting in a, uh, somebody's altar room and creating <laughs> God and goddesses where they will pray. Mm. That was his vision, that was his dream, that mm. his son as an artist mm. will not suffer, will have a good, good life. Because, like doctor have said, the spiritual, spiritual artist, the mm. traditional artist, if you are good, if you are specially like orientated with, with good spirituality, you get all this attention. You do a good job, they will respect you for that, they will even respect you and they will feed you, they will, uh, you know, mm. they, you will be given a double mm. mattress to sleep. <laughs> 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 so, uh, he, he had that vision for me, which I could not fulfill. Mm. And if I wanted to fulfill that vision also, I, would, I wouldn't have done it because uh, it's just one. I was just looking at my own, own uh, own comfort, own uh, popularity. In Bhutan, we need to help each other and grow together. That was, that I said, okay, I'm not going to do that. I want to grow with these kids together. We want to go on a journey together and be somewhere together. The, so with that decision, I failed him mm. in a way. But in other way round, okay, that is also not bad. But now these kids, my young friends, are taking initiatives. They are taking a lot of my pressure, a lot of my stress by substituting me in things. And soon they will be coming on a platform like this and talking about art with confidence. And soon they will be uh, sharing what they know with, with other young people. And uh, soon they will be managing fast and I will have at least two to three years to be there and fulfill my father's wish. <laughs> <laughs> so Ajay, final one last question. Yeah. If you win a lottery, a oh. million dollars tomorrow, yeah. how would you spend it? Oh, that, <laughs> that will be very interesting. I will, I will not give that money to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, instead together, Together we'll we'll spend it wisely, but you know, like uh, on on what? Spend, uh, spend it wisely. Uh, again, again, like for example, I I'm really like uh, last time I had to talk to a traditional artist because of uh, Lorden Foundation's uh, support to this individual guy, and uh, I went looking for him because I wanted some of his artwork to be exhibited in <coughs> Europe along with our paintings. I went to his studio and I felt so bad. I felt so pathetic and I straight away went and reported back to Dr. Karma saying that your entrepreneur is in this condition, like, what can you do something? <laughs> and you know, uh, I wish if I had lots of money. <laughs> You'll invest in the Lord. Uh, I will, <laughs> I will, I will build my dream studio. Mm -hmm. I will build, build my uh, uh, group art center. I will create uh, a beautiful park. Mm -hmm. I will do, make my friends do uh, installation artwork, sculptures in the garden where you don't have to ask anybody's permission, where you have to, don't have to really depend on city corporation's mood. Mm -hmm. 
of uh, you know like if I have I if I have that money I would true oh. art <laughs> you're supposed to win one million dollars but you have a plan for ten million <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you Aja for joining us such a wonderful session um, with very thoughtful wise words of yours which I hope will benefit not only the art scene in Bhutan but lots of young people and others uh, watching us Aja and his colleagues will be exhibiting their paintings in Brussels uh, for four months, starting from October. So if anyone is listening to us, joining us from Europe, do make it uh, to the exhibition in Brussels. Um, so thank you very much, Aja, once again. And uh, I normally wrap up the session with the Bhutanese proverb. I was struggling this afternoon to find something that's appropriate. I suppose uh, as art is an expression of the inner human mind, um, this may work, this may serve the purpose. A very common Bhutanese proverb, Kona mi rimo nale, semchetagi rimo chile. The fine color or art of a man comes from within. The fine color of a tiger comes from without. So with that, uh, thank you. Once again for joining us. Thank you, RTC and everyone for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>